We were just thinking about decision theory as it applies to supervised learning, and we were we found that we what we wanted to do was to minimize this this expected loss here. And in case one, when we're given a particular x, we we're minimizing this conditional expected loss and we applied it to zero one loss. Now that should be actually y hat. Right, we're minimizing y hat. Never mind. Okay, so that was just a detail and now let's think back to case two where we want to generalize this a bit and choose an, a function to handle all the x's. So what happens in case two? So let's suppose we choose, let's pick some arbitrary f and then and let's see what happens. So let's say we, we've picked some some f and let's write down, let's call maybe y hat f of x. Remember we had defined, we were thinking about where to go. Here we go. We were thinking about this x and y as being random. We're given y or, or an x which we have to classify and we want to choose a good y for that x. So let's say we have our function here f which, which does the say classification or, or regression. Let's think about classification for now. And this now we we want to minimize the expected loss and what is that? So let's write down what it is that we want to minimize. Well, it's the loss between the true y and our prediction, which is random now. And we take the expected value over all all the random stuff, which is x and y. So let's write out so we're not conditioning on any particular value of x anymore. So this what is this y hat? Let's well just by definition that's just f of x. So we're taking the expectation over x and y. So let's make a little more room here. This we'll just write out the expectation of this loss function. Since we have a we're assuming these are discrete for now at least, we can just sum over all the x's and y's, and this is the loss of y with f of x times the probability that x and y take those values. And let's factor this more space. Now let's factor this guy. Let's see. Let's, what can we do here? Let's factor this. Which way we, I think we want? Y given x times p of x. Yeah, that's what we want. We want to factor that. And so we're just, you know, we just wrote down this expected loss and we're just kind of playing with it to see see what it looks like. So let's factor it this way. And then this sum is a sum over let's put the x's the x sum on the outside and then we have the y sum on the inside. Loss of y with f of x. And now, so let's put this expected value with the inner sum. So we just have this. I just rewrote what the previous line was by factoring that. And let's now think about this inner sort of this inner sort of sum. So we just factored this out. We pulled out the, the p of x. And what's going on here? This is, well, let's see, this is a function of x. It doesn't depend on y because we're summing over y. So let's call that, let's give that a name. Let's call this, let's call that g of x. We could call it g of x. Let's call it g of x and f of x. So it's a, it takes two values. And then this whole thing we can just write as the sum over x, g of x, f of x, p of x. So this is, ah, so this is, now we, we recognize the form of this type of thing. This is just an expected value with respect to the marginal distribution on x. So let me write, let me write the expected value with respect to that marginal distribution as just e x of this function, this random function. 
that's interesting. So we, we, we were able to rewrite this thing that we wanted to minimize in terms of this. And now let's suppose, let's suppose, we, right, we, we started out with just some arbitrary f. And let's think about if we had, say, so we've got our original f and we've got g of, let's look at some particular point x. So for some x, say, so we've got this, our function is doing this thing. And let's say that that's strictly greater than g of x, I don't know, uh, t, for some t. So for some, so this is for some, so suppose for some x and t, this holds. Well, if that were true, then we could define a new function. We could define, say, f0 of x to be equal to f of x. Well, let's call this let's call this a particular x. Let's call this I don't know x prime. So this is for some x prime. So we'll make f of zero of x f sub zero of x equal to f of x if x is not equal to x prime, and we'll make it t if x equals x prime. So we get our new function f zero. And now this, because this is less, or maybe let's just say less or equal for now, then this, the g on using our original f, is greater or equal because the expectation is order preserving. And so, right, so with our new f, our f0, we have that for all x, g of f, g of x and f of x is greater or equal to, I guess I could keep this as, let's keep that as strictly greater. And then we have the following implication that implies that for all x we get this is greater or equal to f of 0. Because it's equal whenever x is not equal to x prime and it's t otherwise. So this is greater or equal to the expected value for f0. So let's go ahead and just choose some f. So this suggests that let's just choose. So we should choose f to be to have just the minimum of this g thing. So choose f to minimize g x with f of x. Right. So we'll, so we want to choose. So let's define f of x. So now we before we start with some arbitrary f, and now we're going to define. So we should define or choose f of x to be the value of let's see what do we want? We want it to be the arg yeah the arg min over these t's of this thing of g x and t. That was what we were doing here. We were we were finding that we could improve. We could always improve f if we found some t like this. So let's just go ahead and and define it. We'll just define it to be the the one the value of t that minimizes that quantity. And then we get so let's call that maybe I don't know. Let's call let's call it f star since we already had an f. So that means that this this whole thing here is going to be greater or equal to this expected value for f star of x. So this is the best possible f that we could choose, this f star. So we found that to minimize to solve this minimization problem for the case of the general the general case where we have to choose some arbitrary function f for all x's 
what we ended up doing was just it specializes to the the first case right because this was so this was the g of x that we're trying to minimize here we're, we're taking the argument of this g of x and t thing and that's just this which if we think back to the the case of case number one that's just exactly the same thing that we were minimizing here it was the sum over y's of this the loss of y with y hat and p of y given x and that's just exactly our g that we were minimizing so the general case to minimize for all x's it's just it just specializes to it just says what we find is all we have to do is choose the f to minimize the conditional expectation for each given x so this is a this is very nice Remember, before we found that to minimize this, all we needed to really worry about was these conditional expectations. And so it, it turns out from our from our little analysis here that this this marginal distribution on x, it doesn't really matter what it is. To solve this minimization problem, all we needed, all we cared about was this inner part right this g of x this didn't depend on the marginal distribution at all so when we defined our, our thing here we just minimize the inner part and so that's a very very interesting observation so once again we find even in the general case that this conditional distribution p of y given x is the key quantity If you're familiar with your conditional expectations, then you will you you may recognize that all we were really doing here was using the law of iterated expectations, which says. So let's write out what that says. Just make the connection. Law of iterated expectations says this expected value over x and y. We can write it as the the expectation with respect to the marginal of x and of the conditional expectation of this thing y with y hat given x equals little x well not given x equals little x so just just of x say so this equals this and that was that was all all we were really doing up here in this formula when we factored that that distribution all we were really doing was was rewriting the expectation in this way and this is called this is called the law of iterated expectations and so we just were minimizing this this inner part so that's a very nice very nice observation